Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing something about phenyl keto urea. Now before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please download our awesome app if you, if you haven't already. It is available in uh, Android, iOS, both. Link is in description. And we have amazing courses for residents uh, for as low as 1000. And uh, there is an image-based course also where I discuss image-based lecture. And also there are all the high yield previous year topics that have been asked. So all the rapid revision is available on the app. Also, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, please make sure you do. I share a question image based every day there. So link is in the description. Please make sure you follow me on Instagram. So phenyl keto urea is a autosomal recessive disorder due to mainly mutation of due to mainly mutation of PAH. Okay. What is PAH? So it is phenylalanine hydrolase. Phenylalanine hydroxylase okay this phenylalanine hydroxylase where does it act okay so where does it act so metabolism of phenylalanine or uh, you know this is how the phenylalanine metabolism is there it is converted into tyrosine okay it is converted to tyrosine by enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase and Coenzyme or the cofactor is associated with reduction of BH4 to BH2. It is an oxidation reaction, sorry, not reduction, and it is by DHPR, pteridine enzyme. See, BH4 stands for tetrahydroteridine and BH2 stands for dihydropyridine. Okay, pteridine, dihydropyridine, and DHPR stands for dihydropyridine reductase enzyme. So, this reaction, uh, this, this uh, reaction is deficient over here. This Phenylalanine hydroxylase is absent in phenyl keto urea. So due to that, this phenyl keto uh, phenylalanine will be converted into phenyl pyruvate. Phenyl pyruvate, which is further converted into phenyl lactate and phenyl acetate. And this is the reason of the Mousy order. Okay. Phenyl acetate. Okay. So what are the clinical features in a patient with phenyl keto urea? So clinical features of phenyl keto urea, so it is divided according to the age. So age of presentation might be in neonates, might be in the childhood or infant, early childhood or infantile, which is known as the classical PKU. Most common classical presentation is early childhood and then later on it is adult. I have to understand that this patient, when the patient is symptomatic in newborn period, the patient is, is asymptomatic at birth because the mother's placenta will help excrete out the excess phenylalanine. So asymptomatic at birth, the child is asymptomatic at birth, but becomes symptomatic at around 48 to 72 hours. And there are episodes of epilepsy, convulsions, eczema, vomiting. Now there is a musty or a mousy order in the urine. Okay. Now in childhood variant or early childhood or infantile variant, there is a progressive, there is progressive, progressive fairness to the skin. So if child is born a, born a comparatively dark and later on child becomes fair, day by day and it is a wet dream of every uh, fair and lovely company. So there is progressive fairness and loss of pigmentation of hair, even of hair. Okay, so there is loss of pigmentation of hair. There is microcephaly due to phenylalanine accumulation. There is decrease in IQ. There is intellectual delay. There is eczema. There are seizures and there are behavioral abnormalities. Okay. So all these clinical features are there. And in adults, nearly similar cl clinical features are there. Plus there are psychiatric components. A psychiatric behavioral abnormality associated with the patients. So this is very, very important that these are the clinical features of phenyl ketourea. And that you have to understand. Now, in, if you have a patient of phenyl, uh, phenyl uh, ketourea, you will go for three primary tests. First is the serum. 
tandem mass spectrometry now what is serum tms you might have remember about the heel prick guthrie test that was initially done by dr guthrie and it is a dried blood spot it is a dried blood spot test so this dried blood spot that we take we do serum tandem mass spectrometry then we use urine to do gcms gas chromatography mass spectrometry okay so for urine we do gcms and then we go for next generation sequencing which is also known as exome sequencing in which it is the next generation sequencing the first generation sequencing is also known as sanger sequencing the second generation is also known as next generation or the exome sequencing uh, which is uh, what we do okay so for uh, in tms when you go for what will you find so there is increase phenyl alanine and there is there is decrease tyrosine okay and the ratio of phenyl alanine to tyrosine is more than 3 in urine gcms there is increased phenyl acetate increased phenyl lactate and increased phenyl pyruvate and in molecular next generation sequencing you see pah mutation okay so this is how you diagnose the patient and usually once the diagnosis is done when you have values of more than 600 micromole per liter of phenyl alanine then he requires management definitive management is required now you have to understand that uh, earlier the management lesser is the iq loss of the patient because later the management more the loss of iq or more the intellectual deficit that the patient has so you have to avoid phenyl avoid phenyl alanine rich diet like nuts like non-vegetarian and other things also you have to give high carbohydrate diet, diet high carb diet then you have to give uh, uh, multiple supplements, uh, amino acid supplements. Okay, and there is a saproptarin. What is saproptarin? Saproptarin is a BH4 analog. It is a BH4 analog. So in the patients who have a good response due to, uh, you know, the phenylketourea is due to BH4 abnormality or the DHPR enzyme, then this saproptarin is very, very beneficial in this patient. So this you have to remember saproptarin might be asked. So these are the important facts about phenylketourea. I hope you like the video and I will see you in the next one.